<laughs> going back to friends, like what values do you pick friends on? They have to have been to the Olympics. <laughs> they have to have lost their hair from an early age. <laughs> Uh, they gotta, they gotta have nice trainers. That's it. Uh, it leaves one person. I'm good, baby. <laughs> you know, I actually uh, heard something really good on a podcast today. I don't even think they were talking specifically about friendships, but they were talking about the best interactions that you have with people, and they're saying the best interactions that you have with people are people that you don't need anything from. You don't like need a promotion from them. You don't need money from them. You don't need them to like you or whatever. As people that you can just exist with, and you don't feel like you need anything from. That's I feel like that's all we have. Because like, I don't feel like I need anything from you. Yeah. And I, you probably feel the same way. That's think, so interesting, that. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think that's just part of it. It's like, we just rock up and we just... We, just there's, no, there's no other incentive or motive or yeah. any, you know. So, so much of life, I guess, or people go through a lot of life seeking an upper hand, an advantage, a friendship, a relationship. That validation from other people. Validation from, from people, but... You, you see it in, in people's like romantic relationships. Yeah. Like one person just needs that other person's validation to feel good about themselves. Yeah. And if they don't get it, then... It's an issue. They're like, yeah, they have a serious issue. So then do you think it comes down to then setting an expectation with someone? At, like, because... Okay, we know that about each other, but we didn't sit down and have that conversation. I mean, I don't know if you have to have that conversation. It's kind of just... You reckon it just, it's just it, in it? It just is, yeah. Like, you'll know if it is or not. You probably get that feeling. You're like, I feel like this person wants something from me, you know? Yeah. Or like, we kind of met on terms where it's like, yeah, we tried to do some business together. It didn't work out. So, I don't know. Like, we can be friends, but like, do you still want to do business with me? Because like, then, we didn't close that loop. Yeah. Is this friendship just based off you trying to get that deal with me? Or like, you know. But then do you think that then there can equally be a relationship that exists for a, for a purpose? That's gonna be way too heavy for your fucking tiny text, bro. <laughs> so if you applied that same thought process to a sexual relationship, it's I've never wanted to fuck you. What? I said I've never wanted to fuck that's, you. That's unusual. <laughs> <laughs> In a sexual relationship, say with your partner, where there is needs, from each other, or do you feel that there shouldn't be the needs between each other? I mean, I, I do tend to agree. Yeah. Like, cause I mean, in a partner, I think one thing I think about, and maybe you're, we've discussed this, it's not what you're thinking about, but you think, could this, is this person someone that I want to raise a family with? Because what are they going to teach the kids? Do they have bad ideas about things? Like, do they, are they obsessed with attention and social media? Cause they're going to put that on the kids. And the kids are going to be obsessed with validation and attention from other people. Are they healthy? Do they have good healthy habits? Like, do you want your kids like sitting around all day, waking up late, not exercising, not eating well, not knowing the value of health? Like, maybe they've, maybe they look good, your partner, but if they don't value any of those things, then they're not going to teach your kids those things. You're going to kind of, it'll be like a amplification on the values that, because like it's not just one person that now has those values, they're teaching those values to two, three other people and that's making you more pissed off. So it's like, if you don't align on those things, you're gonna get upset. But now that I think about it, I'm like, that would be kind of the same with your friendships. Mm. Like generally, to have a really close friendship with someone, if you're gonna spend time with them, you gotta line up on a lot of, on a which lot we of do, things, right? Yeah. We line up on a lot of things. On a hell of a lot of things, yeah. But I also have a great relationship with a lot of people. We only line up on a few things, but it means I can only spend less, I can only spend limited time with that person. Yeah. Because eventually, we're just not lining up on a lot of things. Like maybe we only talk about sport. So we just like always talk about sport. How many times can you talk about sport in a week? Yeah. Once a month, you know? And that's why you see him once a month. But we can see each other every day because there's just so many, there's so many different levels and so many dynamics to what we can talk about because we just line up on lots of things. And I think for your romantic partnership, that's probably where you need a lot of cohesion on some areas, but then just on heaps of others, you just didn't. And then yeah. when those areas get exposed, it's just too much. Mm -hmm. Too much misalignment. Yeah. Do you need to have next to no dependencies on other people before you can go into a codependent relationship, you know? And I think that there's a lot of value to be said for meeting someone that is independent prior to building a relationship because I think even with that being said, you can be a very independent person, but when you become in a codependent relationship and things become easy, you lose your own independence. Not through 
not wanting to be independent, but through convenience. Because what was once a necessity, now no longer a necessity, you then all of a sudden don't need to, to have all of those, I guess, attributes independently. I guess only if you think that maybe sacrificing that attribute in yourself is okay. Like if you're independent because you love to cook and I can cook on my own food and I'm independent that way and you meet someone who's a better cook than you, you're like, cool, I only have to cook every now and then, happy to let that part of me go. But if it's like, I love to travel and I love to spend time by myself and I love to do this and now they're not letting me do that and you're not okay with that, that's an issue. But maybe you were a traveler and you're like, I've seen most of the world, I'm really happy with where I'm at now and we'll do some trips a year later but like I don't, I've satisfied that part of my life. I'm happy to let that go. And that's like all relationships. There's always gonna be, there's always gonna be some give and take. I don't think like anyone's truly independent. No. Like we know we're social creatures, like we need each other, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I think, yeah, it's obviously we just reflected on that then, but you know, there's a huge amount of that whole little loop that you just went through yourself that you have to frequently ask yourself, like, Again, like I was saying to you the other day, I'm spending a lot more time with my own thoughts. And these are the, the questions that I'm asking myself and the things that I'm thinking about to be able to close the loops on those thoughts rather than them be like things that pass through my mind and exit very quickly.